Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, I want to discuss and I have already discussed in a previous video which I created but my phone did not record for 20 minutes. So that time got wasted. But the crux of that video and this video is what you should be doing in today's time as a developer when there are so many options to explore in industry level fields, web development, mobile application development, computer programming, machine learning, artificial intelligence, data science, web security, so much is going going on right so in this video I'm gonna give you a little bit of perspective by taking you through some parts of my journey the points which I have touched the industries which I have worked in and what are my takeaways what are my top two three takeaways from that let's go if you're new here make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon this is free of cost and helps the channel grow the first thing I did in the last video which did not get record was list down all the industry level skill sets which I was able to think web development is definitely one web 3 is kind of a new thing which is more like smart contract based and programming the ethereum and evm and similar technologies it's still in the i would say it's it's not really matured in the sense that the dev tooling is pretty much a work in progress it's very early days for web3 but that is a field which is gaining a lot of momentum these days mobile application development of course got popular after the first iphone after the first smartphone actually got released and then with the boom of android and ios it just got more and more popular cloud devops architecture is also something which is more of a senior side of things right so if you are a back-end developer or a full stack person and you want to grow even further these are a few things you might be looking into then of course data science is also data science and mlai these are more math related and data oriented stuff and then finally one of my favorite fields um, and the reasons i did not get into them as a full-time carrier maybe we'll discuss that in some other video but that is also web security and security in general right so these are a few fields which i could think of which are more like industry level skill sets even today you can build a full career out of them and yeah i mean most of the people if you try to just take a look at what their domain is if they are working as a programmer if they are writing code or doing something chances are you would be able to fit them somewhere in this domain now what are we doing here well the first thing I wanted to tell you is that in my career, if for some or a lot of you who don't know me, I have briefly worked a lot in web development. I have briefly worked in mobile application development with cloud DevOps and architectural sort of roles. I even do that today with CodeDam. I have worked in web security a lot, right? And this is something which I really, really like as well. So I have worked in like three, four popular domains over here, but I still chose to keep web development as my primary domain right this is something i would say that is if you wanted me to pick one out of these four and say like which one you are most confident in and which one would you bet on that will be web development and the reason for that is what i have realized over the time is you can pretty much choose just one thing out of life whether that's i mean in your career or in general and if you're a programmer, you obviously, in your context, it means you can just choose one thing out of them to become really good at it, right? What you do not want to be is moderately good at three of them. That person has no real demand, I, I would say. Like, if you want to be really good, you have to be exceptionally well at at least one. And then maybe the rest of the stuff is your hobby, right? So unfortunately, that is like a, maybe like a hard truth for some of you, but you can just pick one thing to be really good at it. But that does not mean that you don't have to experience or you don't, you cannot work with a lot of them. Like as, like I lead with the example that I'm good with web development, but I have worked with mobile apps. I have built a few games, published it on App Store, Play Store, new native games. We're not talking about Ionic and stuff. We are actually not Ionic, not React Native, not Flutter, not those hybrid technologies, actual native Java, Kotlin, these sort of technologies. So yeah, I mean, I mean, you can spend a lot of time thinking that you are actually, you can become a good data scientist and a web developer but that's just not the way it works because most of these fields i believe would be very 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 deep in knowledge and content so you would always be consuming content in that particular respective field i mean i'm still learning a lot about web development on a daily basis especially with the fact that the ecosystem evolves as well right so just keeping up with that sometimes becomes difficult let alone covering all the content all right so what does 
all of them have in common. These are my few takeaways. The second column was the, the most common thing is thinking. Programming by definition is problem solving. Programming a solution to a problem, right? So you take a problem, you think and you have a solution for that. That is fundamentally what programming is. And no matter what field you pick in, you would, after a certain, after you peel away certain layers of monotonous work or copying, pasting and this and that, there would arrive a point when you're learning something and you have to sit down and think, how do I create that smart contract with minimal gas fee? Oh, how do I, how do I position that layout in HTML and CSS that looks in a certain way and uses minimum HTML code. How do I break that system with this limited information which I have? So it's mostly about thinking. Programming is thinking no matter which field you are picking up. And the good part about thinking, the best part about thinking in humans is that we can transfer that thinking to other domains, right? If you're a good programmer, if you're good at problem solving, you can very well apply those skills in real life as well. I mean, I have definitely seen that my programming skills are not exactly pro programming in general, but problem solving skills usually help in real world assessment and just figuring out something outside the domain you're working in as well. So these things are transferable in the sense you, if you are a web developer, you can be a good mobile application developer. You can pick up web security or maybe data science faster than starting someone from scratch. So that's like an important pointer that you never really start from scratch, right? You just start from scratch once. There's just one moment in every person's programming journey when they're starting from zero. If you know something about that particular domain, you might as well just transfer that information in your head and will do that automatically to the other domains. The second takeaway we have is picking up one and that's like, like I discussed, you can only pick one thing to get good at. And if you pick the wrong thing, then I mean, you're gonna struggle a lot, right? So. And that, that's like true in life terms as well. Like you want to pick the right career, you want to pick the right industry even in that career. And it's a hard choice. I mean, it's, it's not something which has a universal answer or which someone should be deciding for you. This is something you have to decide. And the sure short way that you don't get it wrong is obviously like trying out most or all of them and then seeing which one you like the most, right? But I do feel like you can only pick one thing out of your programming career and your programming journey, one industry specific skill and get really good at it. You can keep others as hobby, but just be the master or, you know, have that one skill as your gem. And again, finally, what I discussed in the last video was this you possible stuff, which I explained using this simple diagram. This diagram, what it says is that you are at point A and somebody's at point B, right? Let's say this is spatial distance. They are two kilometers away from you. Now, of course, it does not make any sense for you to say that it is impossible for you to reach there, right? You can walk, you can take a cycle, you can take a train, whatever. But it is very much possible to reach that other person, right? The only problem is that you have spatial distance. Similarly, when you are trying to see somebody who's extremely good as a developer, extremely, you know, knowledgeable or extremely smart as a person, you might have the mentality to think that, hey, that is impossible to get into given that I'm where I am standing right now. But what you don't realize is that you are far away, not in space, in spatial distance, but rather in time-based distance, right? So time is something which is also a huge gap in, in terms of like reaching from one place to another. So you're probably here, that person is probably here and your timelines, this is the timeline, you know, in terms of time. So this person is probably on its, on his or her chapter 50 and you are on chapter one in your time. And you try to compare this, and of course, this will not be same. You are much far, much behind, actually not much far in terms of experience, in terms of knowledge, in terms of the hard work they have done and struggles they have faced. So the only only thing you have to realize that this covering this distance is possible, but that will take time. Experience builds with time, the problem solving skills, the thinking, the decisions, all, all of that. It will take a lot of time but one thing which you have to remember at all times is that just because someone does that automatically means 
and it is possible for you as well and especially a thing like programming which is like extremely common now a lot of people are doing it so instead of that factor being a demotivating factor it should be actually motivating for you that if everyone or most of the people are able to do it why can't i do it and probably if you just put in a little bit more effort than everyone else on average then you can be a lot more better than a lot of people so the crux here is that whatever you do if you are initial in your journey if you are early in your journey what you have to realize is that it will take a lot of time but it is possible it will take you to become really really good anywhere within five to ten years there are exceptions for two three four years like people like those exist and you might be one of them but yeah i mean you have to be patient enough that it will take a lot of time it's a long journey but at the same time you have to be disciplined enough or consistent enough on a daily or a weekly basis that you're learning about this stuff and that can only happen if this is something which interests you honestly right if this is something which feels like work to you a burden to you then this person would always be ahead of you right because this person is really interested in programming and learning about mobile application development and how to animate stuff and how to do this what is the new library what is happening so you would always be beaten by people who are interested and slow compared to people who wanted to learn for work but are fast so yeah that's pretty much it what i covered in the last video again saying most of the common same things in this video as well but double the effort i want double the likes on this video if you like this make sure you leave a like and comment down below what you think in general is a good industry specific skill right now in today's market and which one are you in if you're trying to make a transition how I can help or how, you know, what, what are some of the hurdles you are facing which somebody else in the community can help you with. Leave a comment below. That is all for this one. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.